Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and today I wanted to talk about how I went from hating to loving fantasy. <laughs> to be fair, it's a little bit of a misnomer. Um, several years ago I made a video where I discussed my love-hate relationship with fantasy, where I basically was like, sometimes it makes me very angry, and sometimes I love it a whole lot, and I don't understand why. The thing that I wasn't comprehending at that point in time was not fantasy as a genre, but tropes that bothered me, or tropes that I enjoyed. And I found that the thing that has drawn me to fantasy are people who are breaking out of those genre applications, who are having more female characters, more female-led stories. There are men doing this too, obviously, it's not just women writers. but they helped ease me into those tropes and allowed me to feel like I was seen. A lot of the books that I was trying to read had female characters in them, but their stories seemed less interesting to me. You have the beautiful girl who's the damsel in distress, or the tomboy girl who's not like other girls and therefore she learns how to fight and becomes a fighter and I'm like, yeah, okay, that's fine. Both of those tropes are there and they exist. Um, you know, the manic pixie dream girl that everybody wants or the um, tomboy that everybody should want. <laughs> and like seeing that repeated over and over again wasn't something that interested me. The other thing that I noticed and hadn't up until that point was that I as a reader need to read a wide variety of books. I don't like reading the same thing over and over and over again. And um, both Taylor and Gretchen enjoy fantasy and when we were doing book club every week or every two weeks and the majority of the books we were reading were fantasy, I was becoming frustrated at fantasy when fantasy wasn't the problem. The problem was that my reading wasn't wide enough. I wasn't reading enough things outside of fantasy to feel like I was reading um, a lot of different environments and different stories. It felt like I was reading the same story over and over again, even though they were obviously different books and had different merits and all sorts of things. But that aspect of it was bothering me a lot. <laughs> and um, if you watched my wrap up there, you'll see that I read contemporary young adult, adult fantasy, sci-fi, horror, um, thriller, lit fic, modern classics from the last century. Like I'm reading all over the board. I do sometimes also read romance. But you get all of these different books and the reason that I think that I enjoy them all when I float around like that is that I don't get stuck in the tropes. I'm not like, oh, I'm seeing the same thing over and over and over again because when you hop genres like that, you are going to be introduced to multiple different tropes and by the time you get back to the whatever genre that you had been at originally, you're no longer as entrenched in it. and it doesn't feel as rote as it did previously. Books that are fantasy based that I have liked in the past that are more aligned along the traditional fantasy route. Patrick Rothfuss's books I really love um, and they do feel like very ingrained in what traditional fantasy is. Um, they have, you know, your empire, your magic school, your you know, sages and knights and troubadours and I loved it because perhaps we weren't following the knight for once, we were following someone who, or even really the traditional wizard in a sense, because he, he is a wizard, but you know from the beginning that his story isn't going to end happily. You know from the beginning that he cares more about music than he does about magic. He loves magic, but his like heart and soul is in music and I preferred that aspect of it. I loved learning about the different cultures in his books. Um, something that I personally look for in a lot of books is learning about different cultures. That's just my personal interest. 
Um, and if I ever were to write a book, it would probably involve something similar. Folks that are friends of mine and play in my D&D campaigns know that I sort of follow in that vein if I created a world that is an empire. So it has a lot of different cultures that are all together and interacting with each other. And I like that story. So that was something that was more traditionally aligned that I really loved. So if you are okay with sitting down for a tome and you feel like you're not a big fantasy person, this might be good for you. Also the writing in it is beautiful and that's always going to be just a fact that like if you're a writing person you're gonna love Patrick Rothfuss's books. I read one of Andrew Rowe's books and loved it and it's based on Japanese video games like a, the magic system is based on that and I thought that, that was super unique so finding a very unique magic system even if the world itself again feels like a very generic magic school story the way that they get their magic and the way that they use their magic is very interesting to me and it pulled me into a world that otherwise felt very you know like just run of the mill um, I also appreciated the representation in that for a possibly asexual or demisexual protagonist that is a guy. Um, you don't see that a lot. They're often very, like, cavalier <laughs> or, um, just naturally I feel like a lot of people are inclined to write stories about people wanting to have sex with all of the pretty people because a lot of people want to have sex with all the pretty people and sometimes you just want old hands. <laughs> Sometimes if you're me and you are on the sexual spectrum you just want to hold hands. <laughs> I read K. Arsenault Rivera's book which I loved. Female female relationship in a fantasy setting. I loved an Asian based fantasy setting. I have seen people who are of Japanese descent, Japanese Americans, talk about how because she is not an Asian American and she's writing a fantasy story sort of based on Asian countries that there were issues with it of like her research not being completely perfect. Um, I do think that I want to put this out there as something that we should see more of. Um, mostly just because I'm tired of the medieval English setting seeing a different setting is very interesting. Looking at Asian culture and Asian um, geography and architecture and things like that are just going to help change and um, take stories like that out of one particular setting and help allow more voices in. That way that maybe in the future we'll see Asian fantasy stories from either Asian American, Asian descent, or actual, like, this is a Japanese fantasy story that's been translated into English. I know that that exists and that you can get it, but it's not nearly as um, popular as your traditional fantasy would be. I found that I was less interested or less compelled to continue reading stories that were more politics based. Not that I completely hate that, but when reading something like Game of Thrones where so much of the story revolves around your interest in, you know, the inner workings of politics or the um, workings of battles and things like that, I, I just don't care as much about that. I definitely care on stories that have to do with um, characters. I have to, I love reading stories that have to do with writing injustices. So something like Mistborn I super loved. Um, stories where there are characters who are oppressed and are working to no longer be oppressed. Um, stories where minority groups are shown and highlighted again with different sexualities or with different cultures just being represented where you get to see them. Um, all of those things are things that I'm more aligned with versus a big thrilling battle scene. Fine. 
it's fine to have that, but something that focuses a lot on winning a war or something that focuses a lot on people trying to poison each other, I just don't, I, I don't have the time for, the patience for. So those sorts of stories I've not really gotten to. So again, I feel like the title is a bit of a misnomer in that I would n never really hated fantasy. I just was, was not interested in the ones that I was picking up, the ones that were pushed so much at the fore of popularity, I guess. The ones that were the most popular, I wasn't super loving. Lots of people loved them. It, it was just a personal taste thing. And um, I think as I read more and I understand more and more what are things that are turnoffs for me in books, it'll be easier for me to um, stop and say, you know, like everybody's loving that, but I don't, I don't need to read it. It doesn't need to be something for me. Um, but this is something that I really love, and this is something weird and niche that I really enjoy. Something new. I really enjoy new things, <laughs> like novel experiences, and, um, yeah, so that's what I've been looking for when I pick up books. And I've read some that are more traditional, um, and I enjoy them, but I tend not to love them in the same way that I would something that I feel does something new or causes me to think about something in a different way, or takes one of the ideals that I have that I think are very important and puts them into literature because for me learning new things and training empathy, learning about others, um, experiencing things that you wouldn't get to experience in your everyday life is so important in literature. It's something that I look for in literature. Still trying to make content for you guys. I was bored and did my makeup so now I look all pretty for today even though I'm not going anywhere because we're still in quarantine. Um, I hope you guys are having an okay time. Let me know if there's anything in particular that you want to see. Um, I have been off booktube for a while so I haven't been like making content so there's stuff in the last two years or so that Gretchen and I have missed that we could totally do, older tags or things like that, if people find them interesting. Um, let me know if there's anything you want me to make. Uh, let me know if there's any fantasy books that are weird and interesting that you want me to try, because that's my jam. Let me know. Good recommendations down below. And uh, stay safe and stay healthy. Bye.